Welcome to this DM7 series vlog. They are the first Yamaha mixers to have a dedicated broadcast package provided as an option, or it's included with the DM7 control panel. If you're involved with broadcast production, live broadcasting, or even live streaming, I'm sure you're going to find this package a valuable addition. Once the broadcast package is installed and activated, let's see what it gives us. Firstly, Mix Minus, also known as Clean Feed or N-1. It allows a mix bus to be quickly set up to provide a copy of the main program mix to send to a remote contributor without them hearing themselves echoing back. Open the Setup menu, then Bus Setup to see the option for each pair of mixes. Any number of the 48 mixes can be turned into Mix Minus. Then you get the chance to select the N-1 owner channel. That is the channel to be excluded from the mix. This can also be set from the overview screen by viewing the sends and then selecting the required mix bus. Then hold shift and touch to assign the N-1 owner channel or multiple channels. If you want to use some audio channels only when particular cameras are active, you can use audio follow video functions, which can be linked to GPI inputs. Remember the DM7 has five GPI inputs as standard, which can be increased to 10 by using the optional PY MIDI GPI card. In the setup menu, find the MIDI GPI page and view the audio follow video settings. Choose which channels are going to use AFV and then assign the correct GPI trigger to each of these and see how they are color coded. Next, you can edit the open and close times, the levels and offsets for smooth or rapid operation, whichever suits the program best. This is going to ease the workload of mixing a live sports or entertainment event, automating smooth transitions each time a camera is switched. Notice the AFV status indicator in the selected channel view and in the overview screen. The new metering options included in the broadcast package are gonna be a great help too. You can see the meter scale or loudness meters in the utility screen. Touch the main level meters to access the meter setup options where you can select the target channels and reference level. Then you can choose your preferred scale. Yamaha is the default DBFS. British shows a simple calibrated scale between one and seven, where four is the alignment level and six indicates the permitted maximum level. DIN is quite widely used in European broadcasting with its semi-logarithmic scale and permitted maximum level marked as zero. The Nordic option uses similar ballistics as DIN though with different scale markings. T means test or alignment level, 
while the permitted maximum is at plus 9 dBU. The final choice is EBU, or European Broadcast Union. This actually has similar behavior to the British PPM, though with more intuitive markings for the test or alignment level and relative decibel markings above and below that. Loudness metering is more detailed and has its own menu in the utility screen. You can quickly switch between loudness units and LUFS with a quick reset button below the readout for short term and momentary max levels. This is pretty much essential to follow when mixing for radio and TV in order to obtain the correct permitted average loudness levels of a complete program. It's also very useful for live streaming and when optimizing content for social media. Select required units, target level, tolerance, scale and format. Then select which channels to meter. This will usually be the stereo A bus, though it could be another. Minus 23 is the target level for most broadcast content in Europe. For social media and music streaming services, it will vary, though could be set as high as minus 14 LUFS for some platforms. Anyway, having this loudness meter built into the mixer is incredibly useful for monitoring any production that's going to be heard by the public at home or on mobile smart devices. Before we move into the monitor menu, let me briefly explain that 5.1 surround panning is coming soon. It's not with us in version 1.5, but it will be added in a future update. Obviously, we want to take advantage of the neat joystick and panner buttons included in the DM7 control panel. So, watch this space for news. However, in the monitor menu, we can see some very nice functions that were not available on previous Yamaha mixers. Firstly, open Q and notice the fader Q release with adjustable threshold. With this switched on, when a fader is pushed up, its Q will be automatically switched off as it goes above the threshold. The idea is that you can listen to the channel in the Q bus while the fader is down and when it's ready to be added to the program, you can push the fader up and cancel the cue. Simple, but effective. Backstop PFL is another one that mimics the behavior of classic analog on-air mixers. Once activated, notice the faders move up slightly. This is to make room for the backstop function. Pull the fader back to the bottom to activate Q. Let go, they will spring back and release the Q. It's most useful when you want to hear the input and wait for the perfect moment to push up the fader for the audience to hear. In the monitor screen, there are two more new features. Speaker Select is standard in version 1.5 and it's not specific to the broadcast package, though it is still very useful in broadcast environments. Easy switching between different sets of monitor speakers. Note the keys on the DM7 control panel for the best use of this function. Notice the output port patch for the monitors that can be set up here. 
even if the monitors are smart enough to require AES EBU or Dante connections. Finally, we have Mix Mode for the Source Select, which allows various sources to be mixed rather than hearing just one at a time, which is the default last mode. Set monitor A or monitor B to mix mode to allow sources to be combined. This is useful for monitoring several programs or contributor feeds at the same time without affecting what the audience hears. The source select buttons are also available on the utility screen and they can be assigned to user-defined keys on the DM7 control panel or elsewhere. Altogether, the broadcast package will make a tremendous difference to the operation and workflow of a whole range of productions and events. Even if you don't have a license for the package yet, you can preview the functions in the DM7 editor software. Download it for free and get to know it. If you're also involved with theatre productions, look out for my video about the DM7 theatre package. Bye for now. <laughs>